Welcome to my very short recap of Game 12 of the 2023 FIDE Women's World Chess Championship. In this one, the defending champ has the white pieces and the challenger has the black pieces. They are tied at five and a half games apiece. If either one of them wins this game, it's over. If they draw this game, then we go into tie breaks. In this game, the defending champ opened with d4, and pretty soon we got a Kali system, which was the first time we've seen that in this tournament. And once more, as with all the other openings, it seemed like both players were fairly familiar with what to do in these positions. They played book moves, according to the Masters database, all the way out until about move 14. And here, if I open the Masters database, there are four games that have seen this position before, including Ali Reza Faruja, Knight B to d2 is what everyone else has played in this position, and that is what the defending champ played. Rook f to c8 is not the most common move in this position, but it is the most often winning for white, and that is what the challenger played. Now there's only one game left that has reached this position after 14 moves. That was back in 2016, and white played queen to e2, but here the defending champ chose queen to c2. I'm just going to check with Stockfish to see what the uh, evaluation was. It actually says queen to b1 is slightly better. Interesting, but queen to c2 is one of the top three moves. That is what she played. And just a few moves later, we got our first mistake of the game. That was on move 18. When white was building a small advantage here, according to the engine, white has a plus 1.4 advantage and needed to play rook to a2. Rook to a4 would have been almost as good, but any other move would have counted as a mistake. And what the defending champ played here was bishop captures on f6, which gives black a very slight advantage. Black, of course, takes advantage of that by taking the rook here and white takes back. So basically, white made the decision there to give up the rook for two minor pieces, taking both of black's knights for the rook. But it also looks like this pawn is hanging, and of course that's what black takes next. And now black has a very slight advantage, even though material count is technically equal. However, we saw another mistake before too long, after trading the queens, and after black lines up on the other pawn, white plays the best move here, which is knight to d4. And the game is very close to even. Black has several moves that would maintain that. One is bishop to c5. One is rook to a3. I guess the dark squared bishop is undefended. Or rook to a2 would work as well. I can say that I do understand the bishop move and I understand the rook move, although that would immediately be challenged by the bishop attacking that rook, I think. So I'm not sure exactly how those either of those would play out. But here, black did not play any of those moves. Black played e5, attacking the knight with the pawn which looks completely reasonable because you want to give up a pawn for the knight. But it's a mistake because of knight to f5, which attacks the bishop and forces it back. And now that pawn that just, that just moved to e5 is undefended. So white's able to go up a pawn here, attacking the rook, which then of course takes one of white's pawns, evening the score once again. There are only two moves here that maintain the advantage for white. It looks like bishop to c3 is the best of those, putting the bishop back where it just came from and g4 being the other one. Now in a lot of my own evaluations, I have seen Stockfish recommending moving the pawns in front of the castled king, and I'm always skeptical of those, but the defending champ found it. And according to Stockfish, she never fell behind again in this game, even though it was tight, and you can see the evaluation bar kind of moving up a little bit and down a little bit, but the advantage just continues to grow as they move into the 30s. Here one move 34, 35, the extra piece that white traded off for earlier turns out to come in handy. So even though she's down a rook, she has an extra piece, which those two knights, which can work together, protect each other. She is able to get a pawn past middle of the board. And here we're in the 40s where they've both received their extra time. And white's just up plus three, almost plus four here. And as you see, the eval bar creeps closer and closer to plus five. With that extra piece, white is just able to hold everything together just a little bit better than black is with those two rooks, which are having difficulty moving around all the, the masses of pawns. Although rooks can work together very well too, they very often have trouble navigating these pawn minefields. King moves down to protect the rook, rook tries to come around the other way, but then the knight's able to take that past pawn. And to the, and to the challenger's credit, she defended very well here, did her best and played a lot of the best moves throughout this entire section. But as the game moved into the 60s here, you just didn't have enough pieces to stop everything. And after that move, Stockfish has found a mating sequence. I don't know if the defending champ thought she was getting close to mate or not here, but here with only one minute left on her clock, the challenger resigned. And the defending champion is still champion. This time, it's the fourth time. She first became champion back in 2018. And for some reason, Fide decided to hold another championship later that same year, and she won that one too. So she, 
She won her title and defended her title both in 2018. Then she defended her title once more, I believe, in 2020. And here, four-time world champion. I'm glad this is finally over, and I'm glad I got to see it and look through these games. This game was still, despite a couple of mistakes, according to the game review on Lee Chess, was played with 94% accuracy by the challenger and 96% accuracy by the defending champion. So very impressive chess all around. Thank you for spending your time here, and I'll see you next time.